Okay, whatever. Uh, this is Joshua the Heretic from Christian Universal Life Teachings, and I am uh, here today to bring to you news of Amer- Whatcom Community College. Look at that. Oh, the community college. Uh, they have really cool stuff on here. But anyway, um, so um, I'm coming here today. At least get the sun in my face so that way you can see what I'm doing and I can't see anything. Yeah, it's much better this way. Um, so I'm coming at you today to bring to you some knowledge about why is it necessary for women to dress modestly. And, and, and I've done a lot of studying on this subject and there's some interesting things that I would like to bring to your attention. Um, th- now th- this might get, and this is a little, uh, this might get a little bit, uh, this deals a lot with sexual stuff. So if you don't want to talk about or listen to that sexual stuff, you, you might want to back off and move to a different thing. But uh, I'm going to go into detail about as the human species and why things are attractive and why things are, are, uh, why, why, why women dress in a certain way and that attracts the opposite sex. So anyway, moving on now that my disclaimer is out there. Um, first and foremost, the human animal, everybody knows what a peacock is. A peacock is the, is the, male in the for the pea hen and it has this great plumage that it that it can show off to an, a female to to attract them and that you might get they might mate and have children and offspring and and the more fantastic his plumage the more likely he is to find a mate and therefore have more offspring that has better plumage and therefore procreates and ad infinitum ad nauseum so anyway so in the human animal we have a a gender that is designated for that specific purpose that's a plane it's a really loud plane why is it why is it so loud anyway so uh in the human animal it's the females that are the ones that basically attract the mate um and you know this because that there's so much in our society and in all societies and cultures that uh, basically dictate how women should dress and how women should behave and how women should look and why they should look that way um, and I'm going to go through uh, for every little thing and, and kind of point out why it is there, why it's there, and why men find it attractive. And and uh, one thing that we have to keep in note when when it comes to these things is that the pea ha- the peacock, when it doesn't want to attract a mate, it folds up its feathers and walks away. Uh, in the human species, we have clothes, and clothes are there to hide these uh, these sexual signaling to make sure that the uh, opposite sex is not aroused or that tries to mate with random things that are attractive to them. So anyway, um, the sun is in my eyes, but if I turn this way, I'm in the shadow and you can't see me. So I'm going to have to like squint and like be blinded. Anyway, um, so you look at, uh, so we're going to, we're going to see what things are attractive to males. Now, uh, first thing is in all, in all animal species, especially males or mammals, sorry, the, in most animal species that are male or mammal, in most animal species that are mammal, it is the buttocks that attracts the opposite sex. Why is it the buttocks that attracts the opposite sex? Well, it's because it's the most visible thing when you're mating. When you're mating, you see the butt and you're like, ooh, that's attractive, so I want to mate with it. Um, now, so the bigger the butt, <laughs> the more defined, the more protruding, the more rotund, the, the more attractive it is the opposite sex. Now, uh, another thing is, is the breasts. Breasts are attractive to the opposite sex because of a very similar thing. Now, in, in all mammals in the animal kingdom, uh, mammals have breasts to feed young and offspring. And that is also true in the, anim- in the human animal. But there's a significant difference. If you look at all other mammals throughout the animal kingdom, when they are breastfeeding their young, their, their mammary glands are pointed and narrow, and they fit perfectly into the mouths of their babies. Uh, human animals, however, are different. Uh, the human female, their breasts are round and globular and, and they're rotund and, and it doesn't really fit into a baby's mouth that much. I have three kids and whenever I saw them breastfeeding, it was like you had to like squeeze it and twist it and put it in their mouth and hold it there and it was just a pain in the butt. Uh, so it, it's, it's, it, was not, it was not really perfectly shaped for that purpose. But why is it shaped the way it is? Well, it's because... All mammals mate from the rear because most mammals are quadrupeds. Quadrupeds, they're walking all fours. The visual sexual signaling is the buttocks, and so therefore they're attracted to the buttocks and they want to mate with the buttocks. When the human animal started walking erect, we needed a visual sexual stimuli that mimicked the back end of the female. So therefore, the more butt-like the breasts became, the more attractive they were to the opposite sex. And you can see this with push-up bras, and, and you see this with cosmetic surgery, that the more... 
attractive you want your breasts to be, the more butt-like they become. Um, and, and so when a man sees breasts, he becomes sexually aroused. Why? Well, because the whole purpose of that is like the peacock's feathers. It's there to attract the opposite sex. Um, so, so what we need to do in these situations is, is especially females, if you don't want men to see you as a sexual object, you need to de-accentuate the breasts and make it so it's not attractive to the opposite sex. Not only that, but then we see like, uh, the eye shadow. Why do, why is it that men find eye shadow so attractive? Why is it when you wear eyeliner and eye shadow and all these things on your eyes that it, it is attractive to the opposite sex? Well, the reason is because when a woman becomes aroused, her eyes dilate. And when her eyes dilate, they naturally become darker. Well, if you, if you, if, if you, augment this and you, 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 you purposefully make the eyes darker. It mimics that same sexual response within a male and they, the, the, the sexual, uh, arousal kicks in regardless as if it's eye dilation or if it's just make makeup put onto the eyelid or eyelid or eye, the eyelashes. So the darker the eye looks, the more attractive it is the opposite sex because he thinks, Oh wow, she's digging me. Um, <laughs> Another thing is uh, the the blush, the blush that you put on your cheeks, the rosiness that you put onto your cheeks. It's basically there because when you have a when a woman is interested in a male, she will have this blush response. Her eyes will get flushed red. She'll look down in a way, and he knows that she's interested in him. And so, what a woman will do is she'll put rouge on her cheeks to, to initiate this blush response, and therefore he'll think that oh she's into me. In reality, she's just trying to attract as many men as humanly possible. And also, when it comes down to lipstick, the whole point of lipstick, okay, if, the whole point of lipstick is to make your lips look red and moist. Why do you want your lips to look red and moist? And why is this attractive to the opposite sex? Well, because when you're looking at a, at a mammal from the rear when they're sexually aroused, not only do you see this rotund butt, this, this butt that, that is attractive to the opposite sex, but you also see the vulva of the vagina. And if a woman is, or a female is aroused, it becomes red and engorged and moist. So... When you become walking erect, you no longer see the vagina anymore and because it, it's between the thighs. And so therefore, you need something to mimic that same visceral uh, sexual response in a male. And so what women would do is instead of using the lips between their legs, they would use the lips on their face and try and mimic the, the sexual organ beneath. So they, the redder, the more moist it looks, the more attractive it is the opposite sex because it's basically sexual mimicry. They're basically mimicking their sex organs on their face. They're saying... This, if this were my vagina, I would be sexually aroused to you. So anyway, uh, yeah, these are these are things that I find interesting about the human anatomy and, 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 and the the interplay between the, the male and female genders. And so I, I bring this out because it's good to know why you do something. It's good to know why things are attractive to the opposite sex. And this is why I'm I'm a big proponent of of modesty. Um, these things are meant, to, uh, women inherently are monogamous. They want to be with one man for their entire life. They only need one man to meet their biological reproductive cap. So therefore, if you have your man, let's, let's, let's do what the peacock does. Fold up your feathers and hide them away and until you're alone with the man that you want to mate with. And then you show off your colors and say, hey, listen, I'm ready for you. And so <laughs> as male, or as females out there that are believe all scripture, let's, let's, downplay or de-accentuate our, our sexual signaling, uh, eyeshadow, makeup, um, you know, the, the, the de-accentuate the hips and the busts and the bust and the rear and, and, uh, and the hip to waist ratio. Um, because these are the things that men find attractive. Um, and the reason, and, and it's all biological why men find these things attractive. So anyway, uh, I just wanted to let you know why these things are attractive and why men find them attractive and what sh we should be doing about trying to to overcome these things. I'm not saying that men, you know, I'm, I'm saying men need to take responsibility not be oogling women, but women also take responsibility. If you have the signals that are attracting men, maybe you should, you know, try to de-accentuate them so that you only attract the men that you want. That way men can see you as more than a sexual object. They can see you as an intellectual and emotional creature rather than just a sexual one. Anyway, I'm The Heretic. This is a really long video. I try to do it as quickly as I possibly could, but I'm The Heretic, signing out. You have a great day. Peace, love, and grooviness forever. What's up?